but today. Everybody doing all right? Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not doing all right. My wife is not here. <laughs> Almost 20 days, 15 days, oh, 15 days. And I have never, we have never been apart no more than oh. a day or two. Mm -hmm. So it's been really a learning experience mm -hmm. that I needed to see some things about myself. Yeah. I couldn't see him with her there. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she's experienced some things that yeah. by herself. Right. Amen. That because I'm not there, mm -hmm. there's more revelation given on both parts. So I, I thank God for it. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm not angry, I'm not sad, mm -hmm. but I do miss her. Yeah, right. And I thank God for that. <laughs> well, you could be married somebody not miss her. <laughs> Yes. Right. Can't you take it? Yeah, yeah, in fact, you wish it would pay away 15 or 20 days. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Reverend Hobbs, uh, yes. you got to remember God got her where he wants her to be. I he understand. got her there for a reason. No doubt. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Got here. Everybody is, God has everybody for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I think this morning, this, this message kind of puts things in perspective. That if you're weary, wherever you are, mm -hmm. and whatever condition you may be under, God can work it out. Yes. 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 Thank you. And as we as we look at these scriptures, as it unfold, we can see that God is right in the midst of the affair. Mm -hmm. And if we don't see him, and if we don't see him, we can get rather perturbed. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> so let us have a word of prayer before we go any further. Father, it's in the blessed name of Jesus that we approach your throne of grace. Boy, it's there. You, you said we can help in time of need. So we need you this morning, Jesus. Not, every, not only this morning, but every morning which we need you to carry out this ministry. Oh, come unto me, all that labor, and have it laid, and I will give you rest. Help us to see the wonderful hand of your son working in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the tribulations. Forgive us of our sins. Work with that area of our minds and our soul and our spirit have not been developed to the point that where we trust you completely. We thank you. We praise you. you. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Amen. Uh, as we said, uh, I get this too. Christ, the church is part of <coughs> Christ. If the church is not there, there is a, a, a relationship that's not complete. Because the church is here. He's there. But there's going to come a time when the church does meet with Jesus in, in the millennial kingdom. I want to say that because if you don't experience some with me and with my wife going, I experience that knowing that Christ desires the church to be with him. Can you see what I'm saying? Now, if, that, if Christ is in a position where he doesn't desire the church to be with him, then there is much used to having a church. I have a bride, he has a bride. I wish my bride were with me. He, he, he making preparations to get us with him. So that's where it works. So I, I, I saw that very clearly. Nothing personal here is just that God loves us. Thank you, Lord. The, um, the scriptures teach here, um, Earl, thank you for reading those passages of scripture. Uh, as Jesus was talking to a multitude of individuals that day, and he was speaking of an invitation. All things are delivered unto me. By who? By the Father. And no man knoweth the Father, knoweth the Son, but the Father knoweth no man except the Father, except the Son, and he to whomsoever he will reveal that. He said, nobody knows the the son knows the father but the son mm -hmm. and the son reveals to who the father is through him you know God mm -hmm. 
and he made this statement. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When I was looking at this, I, I saw something remarkable, that it, it is an invitation. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Come unto me. Mm -hmm. The invitation is to come, come unto me. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I wasn't there when Jesus made the invitation, but I'm thinking he, he made gestures come unto me I think his facial expression went through it to help them know that you could come unto me you see what I'm saying and his arms and his whole body is an expression of God asking all to come unto Christ if you can remember when you talk to someone and you're expressing some 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 means you you always use your arms right. or your eyes or your hands or mm -hmm. something with expressing mm -hmm. the inner character of that person mm -hmm. in the jaw mm -hmm. in the Christ in his jaw because he had a body that was given to him by Mary mm -hmm. was the was was the Son of God come unto me all that labor and heavy laden I will give you rest. Now, there were, the, there were those in the group, I'm thinking this way, and I perhaps would have been one of those in the group, I don't understand what he means here. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And there was a multitude there that morning, so it could have been in the afternoon or winter, what? but the thing is, you have to make your mind as to whether or not you're going to come mm -hmm. or stay where you are. Because mm -hmm. right. it is an invitation. Right. Mm -hmm. And that invitation, I understand, is limited. Mm -hmm. It's not an eternal invitation on, on the behalf of the church. Mm -hmm. There are seven dispositions, I think, on the church. It's called the, the innocence is one. Uh, the conscience is another. Mm -hmm. promise. The promise Self-government, law. law, and grace, grace. Millennial and the millennial kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that Jesus said, the fulfillment of those other five dispositions, when the seventh disposition is fulfilled, I, that invitation stops. Because the church will be raptured, and you no longer have the opportunity to come unto me in those situations, you know, on that, that condition. See, we come now by faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after the millennial period, there are other ways that members of uh, people that are saved and called up to, to meet them in the, in the air. The key here is that the invitation is for every, everyone who recognizes that he is struggling. Mm -hmm. There it is. Recognize Yeah. And you, you have to have some sense of humility mm -hmm. if pride is 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 ruling your life you say I don't need that mm -hmm. if arrogance is ruling your life that man can't help me mm -hmm. if money he don't have any money look at him he ain't got nothing mm -hmm. it's prestige mm -hmm. he didn't have any prestige all he did was say I and the father are one mm -hmm. come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest. I, I, I went to Jesus, and when I went to him, that invitation, I didn't know about it. But the invitation was there. I didn't, I didn't hear a sermon on this particular passage of scripture. I knew that if there was a God somewhere, and if it were real, I have to call on. Yes. But I think this all is in this this in this invitation. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Rest. Rest for rest for your souls. The soul consists of the mind, the will, and emotions. 
The soul mm. consists of those three elements. The conscience also is there, but I think that has to do with the spirit. The when God scooped down into the dust of the earth and formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils and man became what? A living soul. The most important thing, the most valuable thing that God has created was the soul that man has. Not the body. The body is made from dust. And it shall return to the dust. So Jesus is saying here, if you don't get hung up on your body, if you don't get hung up on your color, if you don't get hung up on your hair, if you don't get hung up on your muscles and how you look, and how your shape look, I can help you. Come unto me all the labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But if you're hung up on your outer body, outer shell, I still can help you, but you have to realize that your outer shell is going back to the dust. I think that's most important. Because most time it's people worrying about where can I make another dollar? Come unto me all the labor and never lay down. I will give you a take my yoke upon you. A yoke is uh, what goes around two uh, two animals as they pull. Yeah. You yoke to the system. The system is has you bound. Well, well. Has you tied up. Well, well. You, see, you see what I'm saying? Just, and you're trying to make it through the system. It is. And you cannot bear what the system places on your shoulder. No way. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Now here, here Jesus said, come unto me. Yes. And I will bear your burden. Yes. I can bear your burden. Yes. But you ought to be yoked up with me. Uh, you, you see what? That's, I think that's a word. Yoking with Jesus. And being unyoked with the world. Paul oh, mentioned that word several times. Don't be equally yoked with unbelievers. But how can we cut unbelievers loose? No, you don't cut them loose. You don't worry about them. You just broke up with Christ and he'll do the cutting. Hallelujah. Come unto me all the labor and heaven laid and I will give you rest. For I am gentle, humble in heart and you shall find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But looking at him from, from a physical standpoint, I don't know what that man is talking about here. He I don't see a Cadillac. Uh oh. He ain't got a big bank account. And all the people follow this poor as he is. What I wanna do with him? I, I, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna chase after what I think of what well, make me happy. But Jesus again gave the invitation. Come unto me. All the labor and the heavy laden, I will give you rest. Now, if you don't know you're laboring, the invitation is still there, but you you will take it because it doesn't apply to you. Uh -oh. That's 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 good, sir. Thank you, Jesus. The most difficult problem is to minister to the weary uh -huh. because the weary has got into this bag and, that, and the weary think there is no rescue out of the bag yeah, hopelessness. yeah, yeah good word uh -huh. and this, I, I, this is the way it is uh -huh. I just gotta I just gotta deal with it uh -huh. yeah. I ain't I, 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 I don't took I, I, I don't did everything I could. Yeah, so your whole the rest of your natural life is being weary. Uh oh. And sad. Uh oh. And broken. Uh oh. And everything comes out of this vessel oh, is sad Mercy. and broken. Mercy. But Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor in the heavenly, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. Learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my bird is light. And you'll find rest for your souls. The, the grieving 
ones who ne are never satisfied and they always want something else, this grieving thing, they lost this, they lost that. I didn't have a chance to do that. And that's grieving. Well, mm -hmm. But Jesus said, come unto me yeah. mm -hmm. and leave that grieving in that yoke. Come unto me and put on my yoke, yoke together with me. I don't see it, Jesus. Yeah. You, you don't look like you got nothing. Mm -hmm. But it's not the outward appearance, but it's the, it's the condition of the soul. Condition of the soul. God breathed in the man the breath of life, and he became a living soul. God speaks to you, he speaks to you in the spirit, and the soul responds through your own will. You see what I'm saying? Now he says here, uh, grieving and depressed. I see I look at TV sometimes and it's so depressing. <laughs> so depressing. I, I have a wonderful gadget on my remote. You know what it is? Mute. The mute button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, even during the basketball game, I watched it last night a little bit of it. I hit the mute button. I just looked at the game. I didn't hear what those announcers were saying. And what the what the what the, what the conversers were saying because they is so depressing. And once you once it grabs you, it pulls you in, mm -hmm. and you're depressed just like they are depressed. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know how you handle, but that's the way I handle on that TV sometimes. Yes. It's there and it's a remarkable instrument, but it's uh, the subject, the Satan can use it to tell lies. Mm -hmm. Young, a gentleman told me in the gym, the television nothing but a tell a, tell a, a television. It tells lies. That's what the TV does. It tell lies. The newscasters, one newscaster doing this, it's the same news, but they're coming out of, of a vessel that's under control of the satanic principle. So don't take it in. If you find yourself falling in love with news, you're going into a place where depression and discrimination and and, 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 and what call this other word? Racist social media has many of minds trapped in those areas. I look at it, but I can't take it in. When it starts to grab me and pull me, I have to cut it off. You see, when Christ leads and guides you, He'll lead you, you. You're looking at something, but you know it's not good for your soul. But the entertainment of it, the things that are said, the things that are done, can grab you and hold you. So I suggest I would suggest to go to Jesus and ask Him to lead you and guide you into all truth, because. That's not the truth. Some would say, well, I, I've talked to him a long time, but he, he, he don't make no, they don't make no difference to me. He's insane. Well, he's talking to you too. Come unto me. Come unto me and take my yoke upon you. Learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is right. Others just say nothing. I ain't doing nothing. I don't care what, how the world, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm just, by the way, I don't have nothing to do with it. What? You're a part of it, fellow. You're part of the problem. When you don't want to do nothing. Jesus came in the world, but he wanted to do what? Something to help those in the world that was under slavery to the wicked one. Then he says this. Uh, I talk that talk and I try to walk the walk. What walk are you walking? What talk are you talking? And you find those uh, that have over here, they're doing pretty good. Then all of a sudden the world gets them and that conversation and their talk is the same talk that the world is talking. Many believers have been pulled in to this type of um, uh, uh, lies that have been told by the wicked one. Let me go a little further here. Now, in uh, go to me to the book of James. 
and I'm going to uh, show you or uh, help us see the the beautiful thing that a believer ought to have in his mind when he's faced with trials and tribulation. Amen. Chapter 1. Let's look down at chapter 1. And, and James was a, was a servant of Jesus Christ, but he also was his fleshly brother. Wasn't he? So Christ, so James had seen a remarkable person from you who grew up and minister and even go to the cross and even after his resurrection he had seen it all and by you being a relative to him quite naturally you got some flack right if you got a brother and he's out here doing whatever he's doing you're part of that of the family so your brother they look at you too they wonder if you is a loony just like he is. You see what I'm saying? I, I don't want nothing to do with him. And some some brothers and sisters don't have anything to do with one another because they don't want to be recognized that they are sisters and brothers. This is what I'm talking about. But Jesus, but Paul, but uh, James said, James is servant of, of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes with a scattered abroad and greeted. Now he's, he's writing to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Paul was, a, was an apostle to the Gentile. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with that race. Mm -hmm. It had to do with the content in the container. Mm -hmm. Can we see that? Mm -hmm. It's never about race. It's never about color. Mm -hmm. It's about what is in the container. Amen. You see? And once you get to a container and the container opens his mouth, you know exactly what's in that container. Right. That vessel, that jar. You know what's in it. You, you don't know what's in any jar until it opens its mouth and it begins to speak. It says here, my brother, kind all joy. Hallelujah. Hey, don't, don't get too perturbed here. If, 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 you're, if you're yoked with Jesus. If you're yoked with Jesus. Now if you're not yoked with Jesus, you're looking everywhere for a solution to your problem. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that you won't find a solution to your problem in this world. Mm -hmm. The only solution to your problem is being yoked up with Jesus. Because mm -hmm. he knows what you're going through. And it says, when you fought, kind of all joy, and you, you're supposed to be shouting here, mm -hmm. and you're going through all this trouble, all this trouble. What well, God is working things out. Yes. God is working things out. God is working things out for your good. Amen. And so when God works things out, when you express what's in this vessel, it'll give glory to God. Knowing that the, the testing of your faith work in patience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patience is another thing. Yeah. I don't have, I'm, I, I think, uh, I don't have much patience. I really don't. And it's, a, it's, it's it costs me sometimes not to have the patience. Mm -hmm. But every now and then, oh God what with it? Just wait. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm in a hurry, but just wait. Yeah. I was in the, in the wars this morning. Mm -hmm. I got a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and got to the gonna get in line. Mm -hmm. The line was both 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 cats, line way back here, way over here. Mm -hmm. I said, "Good gracious, no way back." I, I put the coffee down. <laughs> I said, "I would buy a Burger King or something." Get the guy waiting in this line. The Lord said, "Go back, just like that. Go back and get the cup and wait." And I got, I went back because I, mm. I can't hear him now. I just couldn't hear him when he took me, but I, but I hear him now. And I went back and got the cup, paid for the coffee, and got out of there. But patience. Yeah, yeah. I have a short patience. Mm -hmm. Claude can tell you my patience is, is very short. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, when you're working on your patience, you, 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 your, your attitude, 
your temperament, all of that is involved with your patience. Yes. The meekness, the humbleness, all has to do with yes. your patience. If you don't have patience, you, you can't accomplish very much for Christ. Nope. Mm -hmm. It takes patience. It takes patience, yes. Dealing with your children. Yes, Lord. And, and your, your grandchildren. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And your wife. Mm -hmm. And you no know, characters next door. Your husband. Your husband, yeah. <laughs> patience. Patience. And I look at Jesus, he had plenty of patience. Because I, I should have been put out years ago, but he had patience on me. And Paul and James said, knowing this is a testing of your patience. Is working. So when God is working on your patience, what I what what what, 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 what I see here with Christ, you come to him, you have some issues and you know what they are. You prayed about them, but nothing act occurs because your patience is so short. Mm -hmm. If you put something in the oven, and you know it takes two hours to cook, mm -hmm. you got to wait. Mm -hmm. If you go in it early, any earlier, it's not, it's not cooked or it's not proper. Turn it up a little high. Burn it up. Burn it up. Turn it up. What we what, what, what we're trying to say is that you got to wait. And if God is trying to maneuver in your personal life, in, in, in your life with something, you got to wait. Because when, when God finishes with it, you don't have to worry about it anymore. When you put it in the oven, it, it was said, "Well, God, God gonna cook it." Okay. Mm -hmm. When it come back out, it will be it will be all right. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But let patience have her what perfect, perfect work. Yes. If you come unto me, all the labor, look, you gotta have. I'm gonna help you out with your patience. Yes, mm -hmm. I know you don't have any patience. That's why you're coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you put my yoke upon you yeah. and express my patience. It'll work out. Well, that's right. Have perfect, look, look, perfect work, and enter like another. It says, "Any man lack like wisdom in this area, uh, let him ask yes. God, what's going on?" Yes. And you, of course, you're reading the scriptures and you listen to the message and you listen to some patience, uh, Willie. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take care, but you got to wait, <laughs> right? You got to wait. Right. And the thing about waiting. With the yoke and, and yoke and Jesus yoke, the results you want may not come mm -hmm. in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. I got a grand boy that lives down in Carolina, mm -hmm. great boy, and I plant little seeds. You know, plant seeds, plant mm -hmm. seeds, and you want to see fruitation right there. In my house, I plant seeds. You can't make things grow. All you can do is what? Plant seeds. Be a plant of water. I plant my white water. Or I, I'll, I'll, she'll plant our water. It may not happen in my lifetime. But God is the one to give the what? Increase. So patience. It's primer. I, I, I've been praying. I ain't, I ain't, I, that boy ain't changed that bit. Well, if you plant good seeds, they, they take it in. All the period of time, you may be dead in your grave, but God will, 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 will prosper. He'll get up growing. But you got to plant it. God's time is not quite like our No, nothing, nothing like our time. I, James also said, uh, Man is like a vapor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how long our lifespan is. Com compared to eternity. Mm -hmm. It's it appeared for a little while. And that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. Then it disappeared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gone. We think we're here for a long time. But James put it in perspective that 
your life is just like a vapor. But God can do so much with that vapor if that vapor is patient enough and surrender his soul to God. God can do so much with it. One of one of our passages I want to look at before we close is in the book of uh, Peter about coming. Peter chapter five verses um, five through nine. One to nine. That's first Peter, I believe it is. Chapter five. Yeah, casting. <laughs> this is so wonderful. And you know, these, these little short epistles are powerful because they really get down to the nitty gritty. And I thank God for these scriptures because you can either eat or turn away. And you're going to suffer for it by not eating. Look, look at that. Look at verse chapter 5, verse 1. My, we'll do that first. We'll go through it and we'll, we'll close out with, it, with the next one. The elders who are among you, I mean, the older individuals. He could be talking about the elders, but I'm thinking he's talking about older ones who went, who've been there. I suggest to anyone, if you're going through something, get an old brother, old sister, mother, somebody that's going through it. They can help you. And God is preparing each of us for work. Chapter 5 of 1 Peter. The elders who are among you, I exhort, I encourage, who am also elder, a witness and suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of his glory, shall be revealed. Feed the flock. That's right, Jay. We will feed the flock. Hope the flock eats, but we'll feed it. <laughs> feed the flock of God which is among you, taking oversight of it, not by constraint, but by willing, not filthy lucre, nor a ready of mind. Neither being lords over God's hurt. That's another story. Over God's hurt. But being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, we shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. In like manner, you younger submit yourselves to the what? Elder. Yea, and all of you be subject to one another and be clothed in what? Humility. For God resists the proud and give a grace to the humble. Then he said, humble yourself. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and that, you, that he may exalt you in due time. Yes. This is because we've, we've come mm -hmm. and allow Christ to yoke, we allow Christ to yoke us with him. Mm -hmm. Being patient, knowing who is over us. Then he said, cast all your, what? Yes. What? Yes. Let's read it again. Cast all your care upon him for yes. what he cares for you. Yes. Come unto me all the labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you'll find rest for your soul. Be sober. Don't be drunk off the world system. Be sober. When the devil tells a lie, you may recognize it. When the devil masquerades as a preacher, as a teacher, you can recognize, you can see it. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, you got one. The devil, like a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom they may devour. You remember when God called the angels together in Job? The sons of God? Satan came among them. And God said, Have you taken notice of my servant Job? He said, Where you been? You've been walking up and down the earth seeking whom you devour. Have you considered my servant Job? I did, but I couldn't get it. You were protecting him. And, 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 and those words. But let your heads down. And I get it. And Job, God told Job, Satan, go on about your business. 
but don't touch, don't touch your soul. You can kill it. I mean, not kill it, but you're gonna mess his flesh up, mess his property up, mess his wife up, children. But but you, don't you kill it. So God has power over death and life, even though Satan is the death. He had power over him. You have to understand that. Satan is a servant also of God Almighty. Satan can't do anything without God's permission. So if there's a trial is a tribulation in your life, God has gave permission. But you that come unto me. Or we'll get a labor in heaven later and I will give you rest. I'll take care of that. But you have to come to me and be patient while I take care of it. Oh, hallelujah. But be sober, diligent, because your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Resist, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions accomplish your brethren that are in the world. The same, they, they, they have a problem, too. He said, they're both having problems. Everybody have problems. Everybody had trials and tribulations. Amen. But if you yoked up with Jesus, a lot better. I've had ex trials and tribulations in my life. Amen. Don't think of yes. that I, I haven't had it. All of you have had trials and tribulations in your life. And, you, and, and in that trial and tribulation, you should have learned something. Learn something. God teaches, but we have to learn and to and apply that teaching in our life. If you come to Jesus, you come to a master person who's going to teach you. Isn't that right? Yes. You you assert, How can if you if he can't keep if he can't teach you something, you will not very instrumental in anything that he desired you to do. I sh I should have listened to Jesus. Well, you didn't. I should have read, but I should have, but you aren't. You see what I'm saying? So read, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you where? Into all truth. And when it's all over, he will reward you for your work done in the body. Come unto me, all ye that what? Labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take by you. So uh, apparently there are, made, there are two yokes here. A yoke that yokes you to the system of the world system, to the God of this world. Then there's a yoke who sets you free under Christ. Two yokes. We are born in one yoke. The yoke of slavery to sin. Christ came to, to deliver us from the sin curse and to set us free that we might walk and live a life to give God all the glory. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, come unto me. Just imagine. Come unto me. And all kind of things, thoughts go to your mind. What is this man talking about? I, ain't that Joseph's uh, adopted son? And uh, got brothers? Didn't he come out of, out of a little, a little, a little place over there? And where, where, where he lived? Yes, Bethlehem. Bethlehem or yes, Nazareth. 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 He think he's somebody. Mm -hmm. well, he think he's somebody. He asking me to come unto him. Mm -hmm. I, I came from the same place he did. Well, mm -hmm. But the container <laughs> was, the, was Christ <laughs> in the body of Jesus. Yeah. Come unto me. All your labor and everything, and I will give you rest. If you look at Jesus any other way than that, you won't be going. You have to understand that He's God incarnate, Jesus and God are the same. Trust Him; He will make a way for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's it this morning. Amen. Thanks. Amen. Any uh, Amen. questions or anything? Yeah.